Oh, what's up guys, Supreme Legion King Bradley here and welcome to another episode of Road to Rank where I climb the online ladder and provide my commentary as I go. Finally, I can record the first episode, the first Road to Rank episode for this new season that which includes the new Lost Lands, the first part of Lost Lands expansion which mm, is giving us a bunch of options for new cool decks and strategies. In this episode I will feature a couple of matches with the um, Lens, Fat Lens, Shadow Stalker. So let's give a shot to this deck. Uh, first of all, um, in the early season of Lost Lens, um, Lens was played with this popular location, Armor Garina Road, which allows you to play with on turn 5 with a cost of 3 a, a creature from your hand obviously it, since you have a lot of big creatures you are really taking advantage of the effect of this card but in the previous se previous part of the season the counter effect of, of this card from the other side was that allies of, you, of your opponent cost only one less so this is, was pretty much a good trade-off for you because even if your opponent drops some allies in the game on turn 5 you can drop a for example a Oliver Fagin steal your opponent ally and yeah you know <laughs> what's gonna happen on turn 5 with a drop 7 and but right now getting a road allows your opponent cards to cost all one less so also spells items and stuff like that so I think that yeah, the nerf of Garena Road is well not so easy to do because this card is obviously a lot powerful since it have the the effect of drop a a big drop at turn five. Yeah, it's pretty hard to balance. And right now, it, even if in my opinion. Uh, Garena, Garena Road is not so required in a Lens Shadow Stalker. I mean, if you think about it, you are using two cards to drop one Fatty and turn five instead of turn seven, which is a couple of turns before. But if you know the Stop Thief on turn four allows you to gain one resource. So on turn four, you have, if you destroy an item, five resources. And then the following turn you have six. While uh, with the Garnier Road, potentially on turn five you have it's like you are ha you have seven resources and then you can make use a three drop, which are only seven this deck. But if you consider well, you're actually with Garnier Road using two cards to drop only one fat. So what what happened in the early season is that um, you have some fatties dropping early, but then you have empty hands. So if your opponent managed to destroy your early game fatties, you are pretty much going on th at the top, the top deck. And since you have a lot of locations with the with four Garena Road, it's pretty unlikely that you, or maybe, is less likely that you draw the ally you need rather than a location that is no use for you if you are you if you are empty on a hand. So yeah, this is my modified version of uh, Lens and let's see we have 3 Hold on the Brave uh, a 3 drop, cool 3 drop that pumps up your creatures, really useful and 4 Night Owl which is a key card in this deck because helps you survive the early game and with the stealth since you generally have only these on the board it's really good because if your opponent draw and plays a, an early game ally, you're pretty much doing a lot of good trades with this card. Unless your opponent is mage and turn 4 drops a, a bolt. Force, uh, two Sorcerer Ranger of India Sorte. Uh, this card helps you destroy uh, attachments, crippling blows, items, but mainly attachments. So And also 4-4, four four, this is 4-4, four four, which is not bad. Also, it is good for drop, if your opponent is not playing attachment cards or something stuff like that a uh, couple of raven wild art in my opinion it is a good card if you can haste it and if you are pretty behind on turn five on yeah on turn five if you're behind you can use this card 
uh, with the hay stability lens of lens and you can pretty much cripple a couple of allies for for zero and if it is stealthed your opponent is, has a hard time dealing with it also because it has six health a couple of Braxton and a soldier to stop winnies and aced allies a growing bog dweller this is a last minute addition to the deck uh, because I um, really fear uh, attachments to my unique allies also the um, the attachment that costs 3 for uh, priests which uh, if you destroy it the creature go back to the bottom of the deck so it not really useful to destroy that card so I pretty much prefer sacrificing my creature and give a buff to well, to this one which might grow to enormous size a couple of fans storm caller which is really good especially against um, elementals which sometimes I force the mind control to a three, f a three strength ally three visca mandatory really good uh, for the haste ability and the damage that deal to the Weapon, ba weap weapon based heroes, Ares Fate, we Fate Weaver, which is really good, to destroy attachment, and also for 6 to uh, 5 6, uh, really fat. 4 mandatory Nathanias, which is uh, probably the star card of the deck. Um, in this kind of deck, so less Garen Road and less abilities, it's pretty likely you get to an ally on the top when you draw, and so for 7 you have 5 8 and then another drop, which might be another big fatty. 3 mandatory Oliver Fagin, which is really good against decks that re heavily relies on winnies. So, this card is pretty much when you drop a 1 1 trade, and then it is uh, generally a 4 or 5 7. So, yeah, pretty good. Uh, 3 Stop Thief. Uh, Stop Thief helps you building resources. So, you can drop a 7 drop or a 6 drop, so 1 turn early, poten early potentially, and also destroying your opponent, maybe drawing genes and weapons, stuff like that. One anarchy looting, since in this metagame I saw sometimes some strange item based decks and also against rogues which are pretty much ruling the metagame right now, especially guard. This is really good because for 5 you can draw 2 cards and destroy a couple of items like the I got and gains and weapon. Couple of spirit shuriken, mandatory I think in this deck. So with a cost of 4 and 1 shadow energy you can actually ping your opponent allies for one damage which is yeah maybe good sometimes sometimes really good and you can destroy your punish your opponent if he is overstanding the board so you can keep your opponent down till you drop a fatty and yeah pretty much have the shot right at that point couple of anchor breaker mandatory a uh, one dagger of making so dagger of making is really important to bounce those allies that stop you from hasting for example Braxton and Soldier so yeah this card is a touch card no you're not going to use it always but yeah against other fatty deck this card is really really annoying uh, one spell leader bands since uh, rush decks are really ruling the meta right now together with the rogue so yeah maybe one spell leader bands might surprise them and catch them off guard one guard in a road, I think this card is not really needed, so I probably want to cut it off, but yeah, maybe maybe you will need this card also. And the start of my deck, my opinion, Yari Valley of Doom, this card uh, really cripples rush decks and uh, helps you survive till the late game you need to drop your fetish. For a cost of 3 shadow energy, you ally exile all allies with cost 3 or less, so since you're not going to play so many allies with cost or less, this card is your star. If your opponent is playing, uh, you know, the, those trolls that the, you must attack two times to destroy, since you're not playing so many allies on the board, maybe they could be a problem for your strategy, or if your opponent is a rush deck and rush you, is rushing you hard so you can't keep the control with the night owls, you can just drop the, val the Yari and yeah, exile, pretty much exile the board, so yeah. This card sometimes gives you a huge advantage. And yeah, for 2 Shadow Energy, the opponent can draw a couple of cards and take the control of the location. But yeah, the control of this location against you is not useful. And sometimes, or maybe early often, your opponent has 
doesn't have or doesn't want to spend two shell energy to draw because he needs his resources to fight your your fatties. So yeah, after this big explanation to yeah the meta game, the right now meta game and how this deck works, let's see. I admit that I have tested this deck only one time, so I don't know if it is good, but maybe in this in this meta game we we might have a chance. So we are against a Zana deck. So let's see. First of all, um, maybe Yari Val of Doom might not be the right card here, but we don't know what kind of Zana it is. Um, in the early part of this metagame, Zana was a strong user of Twilights. So we might we might going against the Twilight, even though this deck is a bit. A, a bit too fat for me to be a Twilight, so but let's see. Huh. Our hand is not so bad. We have the Item Destroy, the Exile, the Elden the Brave, the Night Howl, the Bog Dweller. If your opponent is my, is uh, if our opponent is going to play, hmm, is going to play Control. So what are we gonna do here? I don't know, this might be also a haste Zana, but it doesn't mind because she can if I drop the Braxton she can tidal wave away. Do I need the Alden the Brave? Hmm. Okay. I think I'm keeping the the dweller. Maybe on turn two, if she was Twilight, he could already drop something. But yeah. Um Okay, if till we don't see something, I these are just speculations. So let's see what she's going to do. Okay, just me Rosegald, so this is this seems a controlled Zana deck. So, but my opponent right now is forced to Yeah. Is forced to To make the Night Owl not attacking because may maybe he doesn't know that I have an Alden the Brave in hand. Doesn't expect. But yeah, my Alden the Brave is really coming to that 3 4, which is pretty annoying against this deck. So let's see what he's going to do. Huh. Pretty slow. <sighs> hmm. Really slow, not pretty slow. Okay, the other knight. So she's not. She's going to to gain some resources, I guess. So this might be <laughs> a nice car right now. But yeah, with the Night Owl on the board, that's gonna, not gonna be useful. Okay, and we kill that 3-4. And yeah, I didn't want to use my ability on a 3-3. Three, three. On my Alden the Brave, that's no use. Even if he destroys my 3-2, well, it's just one more card for me, no problem. In the following turn, I can just go with the Alden. So yeah, really no, absolutely no problem. Let's see if the if this growing ball dweller is coming clutch here. Um, maybe since I'm seeing those card cards, this is a control Zanna. Oh yeah, we draw another Yari. <laughs> okay, we see a priest of the light. Well, not a big mess here. Let's go with Alden the Brave. And I don't know if I want to drop a Growing Bog Dweller. Let me see. I think that he doesn't have any drawing genes right now. But I think I'm gonna conserve this card for later. And maybe the following turn go for a Visca and yeah, do what I need. So maybe he's going for face right now. Or no, the Vincent stuff. Okay. 
So I want to destroy absolutely that vision stuff because I'd like to force him to be stuck. So yeah, that scar is gonna take a stop T for right now. Absolutely. Anarchic looting also, yeah. I'm gonna keep that. So maybe I'm going to sacrifice this Stormcaller. I'm sorry Stormcaller, but this card has the priority. So in the following turn we are gonna see <laughs> maybe what's on the top with Nathanius. And maybe we're gonna we're also going to haste him. Yeah, this devoted knight doesn't do too much for me. And uh, yeah, maybe the anarchic looting might come clutch here. I don't know if she has an auto drawing G, but if she has, yeah, I'm going to to anarchic looting right now. No, maybe he will drop an annoying. Okay. I'm just going to skip, yeah, I have no resource, I don't need the resources, so <laughs> we are <laughs> the useless Garina Road right now, yeah, this card, I should, I should cut off this card, I know if I want to haste this Nathanius and destroy her resources, uh, no, I'm not, so I want to keep my haste, for later in the game when she when uh, Zana is oh banish banish the shadows so yeah yeah this turn we are going Visca absolutely and we're sacrificing this guardian road because yeah I don't want to see that card in my hand yeah bye and we're destroying that card yeah you're done too much, the other night. Um, that banish so, so ugly. But yeah, the fact is, with this deck, you're playing a lot of fatties, so your opponent has to waste a lot of resources. So unless your opponent can maintain a constant resources drop, and th this Dana is probably going to finish her resources, so he just he just can't tidal wave a return. So he's going for face, really? <laughs> Alright. Okay, we don't need spell eater bands. But maybe. Yeah. I need to haste this card. So yeah, I'm playing the Night Owl. Because I am expecting a Tidal Wave soon. And if she Tidal Waves to destroy, to destroy those allies, I'd like to have another a bonus card the, the next turn to drop another fatty. So our end doesn't look so bad right now. We have another bonus stealth and we have the anarchic looting if she drops the the king's prides which might be a nice play right now because I'm low in resources, I have not so many cards in the hand so maybe maybe she is tempted to do that. Another banish, hmm, really fun, so yeah, but she has so low resources right now, so maybe I'm playing the Praxona right now, you're choosing the second card, okay, so Ankle Breaker, Ankle Breaker might be the play right now, and Uncle Breaker also, if I go to the one durability and I, don't, and I need no more Uncle Breaker, I, I can also Anarchic Looting to draw a couple of cards. And maybe if she drops another item, I can get the third card, which is really good. Okay, we see the Rose Cult. We see the Tainted Oracle. Huh. Right. So yeah, no, nothing scary here. We just go with another Visca. So he's digging his deck to do what? Tell me. 
Um, he didn't go with the the Kalis right now. I'm not destroying this Kalis with the Anarchic Looting because I know this Anarchic Looting might be really useful sometime. And uh, Winterborn, Pack Beast. So, <laughs> what deck is this? Forgiveness. Maybe you now is uh, she's active in the Kalis. Hmm. You're so annoying. So the armored pack base gives a one health. So maybe I'm just going to disable this Elizabeth and I'm just going face. <coughs> For, for now, since I don't have enough damage to deal with that thing. So I have a lot of haste. Hmm. What they can do? So maybe... <laughs> okay, another Visca. Hmm. It's just swarming, but yeah. You can see. We have a Spirit Shuriken. Which is... MS for him right now. Okay, this dude is just going face, so I'm just going to drop the Braxton Orion. Oh, playing this ability on the. Um, on the Aldon. So this time I'll destroy the Glass Calis. And. I don't know. Shall I destroy the Visca? Well, the following turn is she is still disabled. So yeah, I can do one thing right now to arrange my little. I have. Uh, I can still only I can haste only one ally. So three six plus five eleven. Oh, Nathanius. Uh, but well, that's our early overplay. <laughs> She's destroying us for face. Okay, we we need to do something right now. I don't have little, but I can haste one ally. So this Nathanias is probably going down right now. Okay, she's healing herself, so maybe she fears some some big drop. Okay, we draw Natanias, which is really really annoying for him. So let's see what comes with Natanias first. Yes. Oh yeah, this is really good. So we are hasting this Natanias. It's five. Okay, no, that's not a little. Three. Okay, no, that's not a little. But I can ability to destroy this one. Okay, so then I can go for this. And I can go for this. I hope she doesn't have. Any haste things? Because the point is, imagine she has um, a couple of Christopher Wilde and then a King Pride. I'm pretty much done. Okay, she tether waves. I draw a couple of cards. I have the haste right now for the following turn. So this might be. And the focus of prayer. Okay. So yeah, since I have the anarchic loot, ooh yeah, this is a, a, a nice card I want to see right now. So yeah, I'm just going for that Kalis and dropping this for now. I'm not going to haste this this guy because he's pretty 
not so big. And yeah, the dagger for making might be a nice player now, yes. Look at this 5-6. <laughs> the dagger of a making gonna do really nice work. Go back to the hand. We destroy this. And we go with this maybe. Yeah. So she has to do a lot of things to counterattack this thing. This this board. Mm, she has to do a Fox of Prayer Banish So yeah, the Banish is do, isn't doing anything right now And I also have the Raven So yeah, you go to, back to her hand And now, now we are going for face So I don't want to overextend Maybe she doesn't have another Tether Wave, but let's see I can do 15 damage the following turn And my turn is 6 Well Yes, yes I can If she doesn't disrupt this board Maybe I have little the following turn No, she has the tidal wave Yeah, kind of expectable Forgiveness Healing touch Wow <laughs> We're against a Seems like 2012 Zana deck with some call additions. Okay. Ah, what a pity. I had a little. Because I, ca I could just haste the growing bot dweller, attack. Oh, this is Alim, that card I was fearing. Oh, yeah, but now I have the growing bot dweller so I can get rid of the Visca. And just go for face. Oh, Visca. Okay, this is a problem. I might want to get rid of my dagger of making. Six, five. So, yeah, I can play both. I want to get rid of my dagger of making, but yeah, she doesn't have the 12, 12 resources to do double visca. But yeah, that that could be a really bad position for me. So I use the ability on the growing bog. I use the ability on this visca. So let me think. We have nine damage. So yeah, even though I don't play this visca, the following turn I have a little. Uh, yeah. If he is six. Well, the, the point is if I play this Visca and he has a tidal wave, I might be lo I might lose. But if he heals, he goes to 12 and uses. Uh, yeah. I'm just going for it. So at this point. If he has another tidal wave, I might lose. So yeah, I have no fear. If you have the third tidal wave, you're good. No matter what. Healing touch, okay. So maybe... Okay, he's just healing back, but the growing book dweller is going to do to put a lot of work. So yeah, I go down to three and then win, yes. Ah, nice game, I'd say. So the growing bog dweller putting a lot of work here. As we can see, I sacrificed the visca. This thing goes to eight, and just go face. Yes. Yeah, this is really uh, really amazing. Yeah, sitting on a rating of two hundred and thirty-two. As you can see, I did not play so much. And uh, yeah, because I have a lot of exams, but I think th it is enough for this episode since we are maybe sitting here for 30 minutes, 20 30 minutes. I check, I didn't check. And yeah, this game was really long and pretty annoying in my opinion, but yeah, that has to be done. 
And yeah, I also talked about the metagame. In the following video I'm going to explain that, that thing a bit better. And also we are going to continue with the fat lens. Maybe I'm going to, to remove that ugly um, Garina road, which maybe ruined a part of this ga of our game with the Natanias. But well, um, and yeah, this is enough for this episode, guys. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and put a link to the video. I really appreciate it. Bye.